Hello everybody, Brad Pointer here, and it is Election Day, November 8th, 2016, and today we decide which dystopian future we want for our children. Do we want The Road, slash Mad Max, slash, um, I don't know, uh, Oh, what's that one? Red Dawn uh, versus we have The Hunger Games, uh, Ender's Game, and oh, several others where, you know, we end up not having anything except for rich people. Yeah. So, I'm personally voting for the Hunger Games, but I'm kind of hoping for the Bad Max, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. Um, you know, if I have to choose a dystopian future, I prefer one where I get to drive around in a fast car and have a dog. But for the actual future, mm, still, I'd rather not have all the nuclear waste and nuclear winter. You know, just a just a personal opinion there. Uh, this election year has taught us a few things, and so I'm going to kind of review. It has taught us, taught us that even if there is a candidate who we would prefer to have, they're not going to make it through the primaries because the primaries are basically the current two-party system. That's their, their way of weeding out the actual good candidates. That's what we have found. We have found that the primaries are primarily used to put who they want in front of the people. It's not a, it's not an election. It's you know, it's an even more fraudulent election than what we have already have. You know, the electoral votes from a, from the current election, and it's I don't know, man. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Neither one of these choices seems to be very good for America. One of them seems to be straight up bad for America. You know, and that may be wrong, you know. I, that old dude may surprise us, you know. <laughs> An old rich guy who's going to surprise us. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Ask the girls who jump out of the birthday cake about how that works. Woo! But, uh, yeah. And who knows? You know, Hillary may surprise us as well. Although I doubt it. Although I doubt it. I mean, <laughs> this is the only election where a liberal person who is this conservative <laughs> would ever... <laughs> would ever be considered the liberal candidate. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Democrats were like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know enough historically. I know, a, I know a little historically, but I can tell you. It's just... It'd be funny if it wasn't for, <laughs> wasn't for the fact that the future of our country. I, I, how can these can this be? These two people right here. These people. How? How can these two people be the best leaders that we can find in America? They aren't. They are absolutely not. We don't even try. We don't even try to find good leaders. And that's how screwed up our system is, is, you know, we don't, 
we don't actually go out and try. It's it's who has the money, who sucks up to the people with the money, and actual you know candidates who are out there wanting to change things. Man, they're not. They don't even get in there. And with the you know yeah we've got a we've got all these third party candidates. The third party candidates are all nuts too, man. At least the ones that we've heard of, you know, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, you know, and I went, looked online at the ballot and there's people's names that I ain't ever heard before. And if I ain't heard them, that means that they're not gonna win, you know? I ain't mean, seriously. If I've never heard of these people, that means that, you know, if they were any good, it'd have been like Bernie. Everybody knew about Bernie. You know, shoot, I'm beginning. I mean, I know that we've been manipulated and played for years and years and years upon the end. But I'm beginning to believe that there's like, they've actually got some game this year. You know, that Bernie was brought in just to to spoil for the third parties at the beginning and to get get more young people out to vote for Clinton. I mean, I'm seriously, you know, I seriously think that that may be the case. You know, they never intended for Bernie to do anything anyway. They just wanted him to get out and get all the all the young folks and the the old hippies stirred up get them all yeah this is why we went to war this is you know get them get them get the Vietnam vets and get the get the well maybe not the vets but the Vietnam War era protesters and all the civil rights people and all those folks to, yeah, Bernie, Bernie, and then the yank, bait and switch, that's what it is. Get everybody excited for one thing and then, oh, sorry, you can't have that, but here, here's this, and it's terrible. But it's what you got. Yeah, okay. And then the whole Trump thing, man. You know, I know most of my family God love them. They're, they're all in behind Trump. And most of them, well, the majority of them is a bunch of poor folks. And I'm like, hmm, you think the rich businessman from New York City has any absolute interest in your hillbilly ass? Nope. Nope. Everything that Donald Trump does in office if he's elected president is going to benefit Donald Trump and Donald Trump's buddies. Who, if you believe whatever you believe, you know, may be a friend of the Clintons. So, you know, shoot, we may elect Trump and he's like, hey, guess what? I'm a bigger liberal than Hillary. And quite honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, but his, all his bull crap about building a wall between here and Mexico, come on. Labeling Muslims, come on. I mean, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be chicken. Don't be scared of the big bad Muslim. You know. Boogeyman has been out to get us before. And, you know, before this modern time, we didn't cower. We didn't, you know, the terrorists won, man, this time. You know, they did. 9-11 terrorists won, dude. They sure did because we gave up so many of our freedoms and so much 
you know, we allowed so much of our privacy to be invaded just because we're all scared. I wasn't scared. You know what I said? I said, instead of doing all this TSA crap, why don't we hand out baseball bats to the folks, you know, going on to the planes. Here, here's your, here's your, you know, just a little one, you know, maybe about one foot and a half long, you know. Say, all right, you see anybody act up, you knock the heck out of them with this baseball bat. Knock them upside their head until they stop acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, people are like, oh, but Brad, there'd be beatings on planes. Well, yeah, there would be beatings on planes, and maybe those beatings would be undeserved, you know, a few of them. That's the price you pay, and that's the that's the, what America used to understand. That's what America used to be about, is, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. You can't stop a terrorist without beating up some innocent people who were just acting funky, you know. That guy's having a seizure. He got beat with a baseball bat. Well, that's tragic. And yes, that's sad. But that guy is taking a beating for America. That'd be my thoughts on it. You know, that one guy who was fiddling with the shoe and everybody thought he had a shoe bomb. You know, this isn't a real thing, but if there was a dude and he was like, all had some shoe trouble and he was all fiddling with his shoe and somebody said, he's trying to light a bomb in his shoe. And everybody beat the heck out of him with the baseball bat. When he was done, you know, they'd be like, ooh, sorry, you know, you didn't have a bomb in your shoe. And that dude should be like, well, you know, if I would have had a bomb in, the sh in my shoe, I would have wanted you to beat me to death. So, or at least beat me unconscious. So, you know, I'll take it. Basically, I, I think if I was in that guy's shoes, if I was being beat down by a flight full of people with baseball bats, I would take it. Oh, Lordy. We have people being stupid. Lord. Yep, there we go. Okay. They unstupided before I got there. They gave me a light. They gave me a green light, and the sheriff had to stop. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. In spite of all that, <laughs> rambling, get your butts out and vote. That's how you do it. Get them out there. Get them out there and vote, even if you're voting for an idiot, because... You know, we're both voting for for insanity, one one form or another. Anybody out there, you're going out. You're going to vote for a bad candidate. It don't matter, but do it. Do it. We need to make a choice. You know, these are the choices that they're giving us. Hopefully, it'll blow up in their face, and we'll all be running through anarchy next year. You know, we'll all be fighting each other for scraps of food. I think that's the best case scenario we can all hope for at this point, is the total collapse of the American civilization, and the civilization of the world in general, you know. I don't know. I'm not putting this up, am I? No, probably not. All right. Peace.